Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Just waiting for a few people to get on board. Yeah. I'll probably move closer to you. Let's get going. Get going? Yeah. Okay. So. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chloe Maxwell. You might know me from television. I'm also a published author and co-founder of 4ASD Kids. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend this to any First Nations people watching this evening too. I'm very excited because I'm here tonight with my husband, Matt Rogers, and we're going to talk about his new autobiography, A Father's Son, Family, Football and Forgiveness. We are. Yes. So, uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Um, should have a bit of fun tonight and uh, I guess share a little bit about uh, how this book came about and um, what it was like writing a book, I guess. I mean, uh, I certainly don't think my English teachers at school were so... <laughs> Would have picked me as the first person in the English class to write a book, so um, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey and a lot of fun. Before we kick off, we'd love to hear from you. So comment the questions you'd like to ask via the question mark Q and A icon. Should be down there somewhere, and we'll do our best to get through some towards the end of the event. Feel free to show support and you know let us know if you've ordered Matt's book uh, or you've read Matt's book in the comments. And if you haven't, you can order a copy from booktopia.com.au. Yes. So let's get started. Hey? Okay, let's do it. Do you <laughs> love me asking you questions? <laughs> this has happened well, a few better, times. It's better than being told what to do. So. <laughs> That'll questions be later. Be That'll be after the event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clean up the kitchen. Uh, I know you've had this book swirling around in your head for a while. Mm. Why did now seem like the right time to write it? Uh... Well, I actually was going to write a book when I finished playing and I never actually considered writing a book myself. I always thought, because I've seen it so often from so many people, um, they have ghostwriters, you know. I've seen so many of my old teammates or, you know, so many people who have written books had ghostwriters and I just thought that's what you did. And then you wrote a book. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. Living with Max, also yeah. available from Booktopia. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I just when the, when the opportunity came up again, uh, twelve years ago, the opportunity arose, and and I and I couldn't find the right person to help me write it, so I just I just sort of gave up on it. Um, I think doing the TV show Survivor introduced me as a person to Australia more than a footballer, and uh, the opportunity popped up again. And I, and I think after you writing the book uh, that you wrote um, and seeing you put all your emotion and time and effort into it uh, and then your encouragement along with my agent, um, David, who really encouraged me to write Lovely it. David Dalton. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, I just thought, well, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And within a month, I just thought, what the heck have I got myself into? This is, mm -hmm. this is, a, this is so hard. Um, and then I sort of got into a bit of a groove, you know, and I thought, oh, no, this is good, this is fun, you know, and, and, I, and I felt like I was going through this whole, um, almost like therapy process. Cathartic. Right, right cathartic. in the book, you yeah. know, and uh, and then I got to a really tough, some really tough points in the book, you know, about, you know, writing about my mum and, uh, you know, reliving what I went through with dad. And and it was, it was more, um, more having... My brother and sister, who I love to death, um, you know, I, I, I had to say I wanted to run everything by them and I wanted to get in, inside their heads and make sure that what I was remembering was what they were remembering. I didn't want them to be any surprised by anything. Um, you know, we're all extremely close, the three of us. And, uh, and they were all pretty supportive, though. Oh, they were incredibly yeah. supportive, but I sort of started to learn some things that I didn't know and it, and it really and it, and it threw me. And I, I sort of put the uh, laptop away and uh, I thought I can't keep writing this book. I just, and I sort of gave up on it, um, which, you know, it was a tough thing to do. I didn't want to write anymore. And I, I rang um, my publishers, Simon Schuster, and um, and I just couldn't, I said, I, said, I can't keep doing it. And, and they said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll help, we'll get someone to help write that end of it. And, and but the end of it was, you know, the, the, the stuff yeah. that I, I had to write. And uh, 
you know, in the end, um, I, I just, I don't know, I had about three or four months off, I think, and I just, yeah, I walked in, back into the office one day and I just started writing um, and I got it finished. And I was so proud of the fact that I did that because I just didn't want to have my hardest moments in my life through go through someone else's filter and um uh yeah I'm, I'm stoked with the way that it, it came out so yeah it was um it was a it was a it was a tough process but you know one that i'm really proud of and you know i'm, I'm wrapped that you know in years to come my kids will be able to you know read you know my life story and um you know my people have supported me throughout my life have read it and I've, I've just had some amazing messages from people who have already read the book that have been phenomenal. That was going to be my next question. How, I mean, how does it feel to have it out there now? Because yeah. I know when I wrote my book, it was like giving birth but not wanting anyone <laughs> to hold the baby. I was like, oh, oh, I don't know that I want you to hold this. And no, my what's and all. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel having it out there now? And have there been any reactions that have surprised you? With what well, I've had a few people say to me, it's the best book they've ever read. And, I, and my first response was, is, is this the only book you've read? <laughs> um, Hi, David. Yeah, yeah. But I, um, I, I just <laughs> thought, you know, I, I, I just put my heart and soul into it. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like, I, I sent it to a friend of mine who was an author to read, and he wrote this beautiful sort of, not Dave. just any author. Yeah, well, Marcus is that one of Australia's you know, greatest <laughs> authors. And uh, I played football with Marcus. There's a picture of him in the book, actually, when we were kids. And he said it was like sitting down at a coffee table, having a coffee with your mate and him telling you, you know, things. And, and I just, um, hey, Kyle's, all the way from the US. Oh, Kylie, yeah. hi. And, uh, and, and that made me feel like, wow, that's, you know, for, for someone of that who writes for a living, who's at that, you know, he's unparalleled in Australia, you know, a novelist. And um, I was just wrapped with, you know, the way that he, he received the book. So um, for me, you know, like my life has been um, fairly turbulent at times, but I wanted to make the book easy to read. And um, yeah, so they're short chapters, so you don't have to, you don't feel like, they don't take you too far down the track before you hit get you to the punchline and you can go to the next the next chapter so um I, I think that makes it a little easier to read and um yeah i'm just but the people that have been sending me messages it's been phenomenal I, I'm, I'm absolutely just blown away i'm gobsmacked to be honest at some of the responses that i've received what was the writing process like what for you well, I know. I mean, I know what it was like. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want you guys to know. What I, it was I didn't like know. Him. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people on here that have never written a book, um, and and that was me. And, and it was like I don't even know where to start. Like when someone says, "Oh, we want you to write your life story," it's like, "All right, well, you know, I was born on this day, and <laughs> do you start from there?" Like it's sort of. But um, I had a, a great editor who helped me out, just sort of mapping out sort of the, the key moments in my life that I feel like impacted the direction of where I was going. And um, I just filled in the blanks, you know. I, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that I wrote that didn't go into the book because it, there's just too much stuff. But um, I just kept writing and um, I was just, you know, blessed to have, you know, uh, Dan, who's a great editor, um, who helped me piece everything together and... Um, but the, the process itself, you know, I felt like it helped me um, really reconcile a lot of my life. Like, I really do. I just, if, you read the, if you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, but my, my childhood was sort of like, it wasn't the easiest as much as what most people would think. Oh, you know, your dad was a football star and, and you wanted to be a football star. So he would have just coached you all the way and you would have just sailed into, you know, your, your career. It was just, it was so far from that that it's ridiculous, you know. It was... I was just constantly trying to chase things. And, and I look back now and I feel like um, what that did for me was it just hardened me. It made me, me realise that nothing was going to be handed to me and it, it, it created who I was and it, and it allowed me to have the, the career that I had. So I was not um, gifted anything. Um, and it's actually made me think that maybe we do too much for our kids. Yep. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, we do. <laughs> Uh, maybe they need to, you know. Silver spoon. Yeah, but um, 
look, it was a, it was a, it was, a, it was an experience that, like I said, helped me reconcile a lot of my life and, and work out, um, work out what is our secret to a happy marriage. <laughs> you know what? You need to yeah. hit the Q and A icon down yeah. the bottom. It's red, just to remind you guys for Q and A afterwards, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so we can get to your questions then. It's just say yes a lot if you're the husband. <laughs> yeah, that, that um, is the secret. <laughs> but um, no, look, the book itself. Um, you know, it, it, it taught me a lot about me, um, actually writing it down. You know, I, many years ago, um, you know, my brother's been through his own challenges and my, my sister, um, we, we've all been through stuff, you know, and, and I remember seeing um, a therapist years and years ago and him saying, just write, write a letter to your brother or write a letter to your sister, tell them how you feel. You don't have to give it to them, just write it down. And I felt like I just did that with my whole life. Um, and boy, man, I, I tell you, it, it, it just—I feel like I'm a lot lighter now. I feel like my life, um, yeah. Talking about my dad was never the easiest thing because it's sort of like people are like always a bit awkward with it, and particularly after how things went down. But um, now I feel like that, you know, just bring it on. You know, I can talk about anything now because I've just—I've got it out, which is great. Well, you do talk a lot about your dad in the book, hence mm. the title, uh, and your early life before and during entering a professional football career, but also about the bond that you have. You already spoken about your brother and sister. Yeah. But you share a special bond, obviously, with your brother, Don. Mm. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. It wasn't always the case. Oh, uh, well, well, we were always <laughs> really... It was a bond, but you yeah. guys fought a lot. Oh, I know it's we were so competitive. I feel like you need to sit back a little. Your um, head's being chopped off. Oh, well, well, maybe it was just your ear. No. Yeah, oh, you can chop. It makes me look good when you're chopped off. They, they, they take up too much of the screen. False advertising. They don't actually work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't hear me. But the, um, <laughs> my, brother, my brother and I grew up, you know, with our dad as, a, as you know, the... the the bridge and superhero, you know, the, the, the country and the state's hero of rugby league. And, and all we wanted to do as kids was, was be like him, you know. We were so competitive in everything that we did. And he was a little bit bigger than me. He was a couple of years older than me. So we, uh, you know, and I would beat him occasionally from time to time, or quite often, and, and then we'd just fight, you know, like physically. Um, and, you know, he, he, he toughened me up, I can tell you that, like, I could have easily, I could have easily just stopped the winning. I just just thrown a game oh, of handball. You would never easily no, stop. Winning. No, no, no. So, <laughs> no, so no, he would just you. beat me up, and and that was sort of like the end of the, the the whole process and stuff. But, but, but what I just admire so much about my brother is, is um, you know, he's a couple of years older than me, and he saw his dad with this life of just, you know, he was a hero, and then he saw his brother do the same thing, his little brother, and he had to live right smack bang in the middle of it. And never once in his life has he ever begrudged any of it. He's never, ever not supported me 100%. He's never not been in games, you know, cheering. He's never not been at games, you know, supporting me. He's never, ever spoke ill of what I've been trying to do. Um, and I, you know, I, just recently I had a coffee with him, you know, and it was quite an emotional sit down with him. And I just, and I said, no, I, I just, I don't think I could have lived your life, you know, because I wanted, I wanted, it's so bad that if it, if I didn't get it, I don't know where I would have gone, you know. And um, you know, he's had his challenges over the years, but you know, he's in the most amazing place I've ever seen him in his life, and it just he's my hero to be able to get through that and uh, and do what he's doing now. Um, I'm just you know just incredibly proud of him that you know just his 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 mental toughness is you um, know I think it would have been easier to live my life than a lot. Than, than his and uh, he did it and he's coming out the other side and he's, he's firing so yeah it's created a, a very strong bond between the pair of us um, you know our sister he lives around the corner and our sister lives over in WA but we're all very close and um, you know we all went through the same stuff together from start to finish so it's um, yeah it's, it's no secret or it's no you know, no one's unsure of what we went through like individually we all went through it together and um, you know we're all there for each other and you know, we came out the other side, which is great. Absolutely. Uh, you talked about how you got to deal with the Sharkies. We love the Sharkies. Um, the Sharkies. Up, Cronulla. Yeah, you betcha. Uh, and the pressure that you felt from your dad to make it to the top. You mm. also mentioned you had a very complicated relationship with him. Mm. And that you marked yourself 
against the standards of him? Where does he sit in your headspace now? I still do it. I still you do still it. do that? 100%. Uh, I still wow. I, look, I look at where my life is right now. I look, oh, okay, dad, when dad was 46, what was he doing? Where was he? Am I in a better place than that? Isn't it his birthday soon? Last. Oh, it was birthday. last weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was, he would only be 68. You know, like young. So young. Yeah, so 69, so No, 68, yeah. Um, but I, I still do that, you know. And it's not to say, like, I'm better. It's just because that was all I could mark myself against. That's, he was my mentor. I, he was my hero. He was the guy that I chased. And, and I wanted to, to be as good or better. Um, I feel like, you know, for what he went through and, yeah, I just, yeah, you know, I, I do that because I don't want to end up there, you know. Like that's that's the reality of it. Like you know, I want to make sure that I'm looking after myself mentally and and uh, you know looking after my family and making sure everything's you know in a good place. So that's uh, it's really important to me. Yeah. But but it was you know I, I did that from the age of four years old when I started playing footy. <laughs> you know what were you doing when you were four years old, Dad? Were you playing? You know, were you playing at eight years old? Did you make Queensland or did you make New South Wales at twelve years old? Did you? How can you I know, beat you? This yeah, is a here. And and you know, when you're a twelve year old kid and you're competing with, you know, one of Australia's premier athletes, it's it's tough to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> so I never did, and I hated it. And um, there yeah. was a time you came close, though. Do you want to talk about that? Which time was that? When you almost equaled his score, aren't you oh, like yeah, the highest oh, Cronulla, point scorer yeah. at Cronulla? Yeah. Well, no, we, we were both equal the highest point scorers in the game. But he, uh, he, he, he made sure he let me know that when he got the record of twenty six points in a game, he scored. He kicked ten, ten goals and he scored two tries. But two tries back in his day were only worth three points. So really, he should have been twenty eight. That's what he told you. Yeah, yeah, that's what he told me. And he actually did. He ever tell you he was proud of you for what you achieved? No, or? no. No, but but I, I know he did. I know he was now, you know, because like, I've you know I've since heard from a lot of people um, that he would speak behind my back um, and just never said it to you. Tell, told them how proud he was of me, but um, you know, now he wasn't that sort of a guy. You know, like he was a pretty pretty hard guy. You know, a good friend of mine, um, Greg Bird. He, he, you know, many of you who are rugby league fans might know who Greg Bird is, and we're very close. And I've known Greg for many I years. You're still closer because your head's big. And um, and Greg, Greg, you know, Greg took that under his wing when he was 17 years old and arrived at Cronulla. And Greg, he said, mate, your dad used to scare the crap out of me. I said, mate, welcome to my world. You know, like, that was me. Like, my dad was terrifying. Um, but he was, a, he was just the most loving and giving guy of his time to people. But it just, we didn't see um, a lot of that as kids, you know, and that was probably the thing that hurt the most. We did achieve huge success mm. in two codes of football, rugby union and rugby league. What do you think is one common misconception that people have of playing professional sport or professional athletes? Oh, it's just easy. You know, like, oh, they've got it, they've got it easy. You know, it's, it's not easy. Um, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, most people know that it's not easy to get there, but to stay there and to, to, to be, be up, week in week out year in year out um the travel um the toll it takes on your body um what it, what it does to you mentally you know you get criticized you know you're like open it's like open season for, on you um from the press from fans from you know opposition fans um you know it's pretty cruel things that happen in the world of professional sport but i'm not going to sit here and say oh well it's me it's, it's certainly not the case but there's certainly a misconception that oh you know, like I, I see, you know, players complain or, or players sort of arguing for, you know, they want more money or whatever um, from a league or something. And players go, oh, put them on a shovel. But it's, 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 it's not relatable. It doesn't work that way. Like, you know, the, the players argue for more money because there's more money that the game's making and the players are the ones that um, deserve the money, not the um, executives with their snaps in the trough. So it, it frustrates me a little bit when people just don't understand that. Um, it uh, it's it's a very difficult life um, playing professional sport. Um, it's not. Um, you've got to be quite selfish, really, don't you? Well, in a lot of ways, because well, you do, you do you've got to focus you on your body, your, your sport. Gotta, it's got to be all about you being prepared for that. If you want to be good, going to walk. If you want, 
Well, it's not going to war. Well, on the football field, yeah. you're running up yeah. against human brick walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just don't like that comparison because it's just, you know, people who go to war die. And it's true, I true. Never, I never I apologize. Like football field <laughs> thinking that. But, um, yeah. But what I'll say is it's, um, it's hard, you know, like it's, it's, it's tough. And, you know, getting yourself prepared every week, it takes – I, I, people, you know, it, it, it can seem selfish, but I would prefer to say it's discipline um, because that's what it is. And I feel like, you know, I set a good example for my kids to be successful. If they want to be successful in anything, it takes discipline. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out there that will try to pull you away from what your goals are. And I say to my kids, if your goals are this and your friends don't believe in it, change your friends, don't change your goals. Um, because they're the ones that will pull you down. So true. Just a reminder, if you want to ask any questions, there's a Q&A button down the bottom in red. We're going to do a Q&A at the end. Uh, so you've overcome many challenges, broken many bones. Robbie O, how are you, mate? Oh, Robbie O. Robbie O Davis, Newcastle Knight, Hall of Famer, Queensland Australian player and Stewie. How are you, mate? How's well. Louise? Hope she's well. Uh, You've overcome many challenges. Uh, the more recent of challenge, I would say, is your autoimmune disease. Mm. Tell us a bit more about that. Oh, I just hit me pretty hard a couple of years ago. I just, I just, um, careful. I me. just feel like you're not in shot. I'm in shot. Um, <laughs> your ear isn't. I, I, I just got hit with this my shoulder started to hurt and I just thought it was something that was real minor, like it's just an old shoulder injury. I've had, I've had both shoulder reconstructed, um, so both shoulders. Um, and I just thought, oh, it's just an old injury sort of flaring up and then it sort of went from my shoulders basically to every joint in my body and it just riddled me out with pain and never been thought anything like it. Uh, and it sort of happened sort of gradually over a couple of months and then it just sort of really came on really badly and um I, I literally thought i was going to die i thought oh this is this is blood cancer or something this has got like it went through my body that quick i thought this must be like in my blood whatever it is and it's it's going to kill me and and i remember saying yeah, let's go and get the will sorted out now you know like your life insurance will all that stuff we've got to go and get it done and um we did all that and fortunately it was just an autoimmune condition that is treatable um with you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty significant, well, yeah, manageable. I'm pretty significant medication routine now, and um, I feel like I'm on the right side of it. Um, I feel like I can manage the pain and I can sort of live a relatively normal life. Um, but yeah, I've just got to be a little bit careful with things like alcohol and um, you know what I do, like in terms of you know put pressure on my joints and stuff like that. But um, I feel pretty good. I can I can still play golf. <laughs> it's the most important thing. Yeah, I can't imagine you will never not be able to play golf. Yeah. Uh, when fans approach you in yeah. the street, do they, I mean, I know for a while there, there were different times that you'd have different fans <laughs> because you've done a few things. You were on yep. Survivor, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you were on Dancing with the Stars. Mm, I was. Made the uh, final. <laughs> you did. So there was a difference in fans over those times. Yeah, Tell the story. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would go places and um, sound like you'd have sort of an, an, an older sort of lady with purple hair come up and, oh, I love you, you're so, I just think you're gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, do you fly the sharks? Like, oh, no, I saw you on Dancing with the Stars. And, what a foxtrot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox it was trot. amazing. <laughs> you know, and uh, it was just bizarre. It was really weird. I was so surprised you got so far in that show what? too. What? You were surprised? Are you kidding me? Well, you can't dance, well, really. Well, no, but, but what Dancing with the Stars is, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a little <laughs> secret. So if you can remember stuff and you're attached to someone who is a professional, um, you just... You look good. Yeah, you follow that. And, I, and, I, and I, as soon as I... I in, in rugby league or rugby union, you learn plays. And, and that's what I sort of likened it to. Like, each dance was a play, and I had to learn it. And um, once I sort of triggered, like, flipped my mind into that mode, I could learn it quickly, like it. The first dance took me about two weeks to learn. Um, <laughs> then the second one was like a week, and then like after like week three, you're doing two in a day. Like it was, you could just I could just do it. And I was attached to Ash, who was an amazing dancer and great, and she became a great friend of ours. Um, and we had a ball. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got to the final, 
And the three people that beat me in the final, they were all dancers. And I thought, this dancing with the stars right stuff's right weird. Right he doesn't like to lose. I don't know anyway, if you've got that yet. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, then, but then, you know, after Survivor, I'm cruising through, I remember cruising through Bondi Junction. And um, this, these two little girls go, oh, the Godfather, you know, like, you know, <laughs> they wanted to get a photo with me. And the dad's like, oh, this is, you know, he's like a Julian and Ashton. They're looking at their dad like, what? What does that mean? What is that? He's from Survivor. He's a godfather. <laughs> I went and did a, um, a footy clinic with um, uh, Michael Crocker up here in Burley. And a lot of kids there, you know, a couple hundred kids, people like seven and eight-year-olds. And I'd been retired for like 10 years and I weren't even born when I was playing. So I rock, I rock up to this clinic and they all come in off the field and they sit down and Croc introduced me. Oh, this is Matt. He's going to say a few words. And this kid in the front row looks to his mate and goes, why is the guy from Survivor here? <laughs> so um, it was uh, it was pretty funny, but um, it was a lot of fun uh, doing all that stuff. But uh, yeah, look, it was it was more fun than um, anything too serious. We'll jump on that Q and A icon if you want to ask a question. We are going to get to them very shortly. What did writing this book teach you? Oh, it just taught me that I can um, I can actually probably do more than I think. You know, like I never thought I could write a book. Um, uh, taught me patience, I can tell you that, like, you know, having the, the time to sort of sit there and and just relive a lot of stuff and just taught me patience and um, they actually taught me that, man, my, my life's been pretty cool. Um, you know, there's been a lot of good stuff that's happened in my life. There's been some, some tough stuff to get through, but, you know, I, I just think that, that's, that's the making of you, you know, like that stuff. You know, that's, who, that's what shaped, you, shaped your character. And, um, you know, like going through the stuff with mum and dad and then, you know, with Max. And, um, you know, I've been married before through a divorce. You know, you learn a lot. And, um, you know, reliving it all sort of made me realise like I've come a long way. And, uh, you know, I'm, sort of, I'm, I'm really happy with where I am. That's what it taught me. It's actually, it, it helped me um, have more gratitude for the life that I have. Really Despite more. all the negatives. Yeah. Yeah. something in that, something profound. Finally, what's next? What are you doing now? Quite, yeah, a, few, quite a lot of things. What am I doing? Well, we, we, you know, I, have a, I have a sports management business now. Um, I've got a, a civil business. Um, so we um, run trucks around and we, uh, we, we manage um, young kids, some of my trucks. Sports management. <laughs> sports business. management, yeah, yeah. yeah, which is a lot of fun. I uh, love helping these kids realise dreams and, you know, see the, see the fire in their eyes as young kids and try to facilitate pathways for them. And, um, yeah, so and we've got a busy house, you know, we've got, um, you know, the two, you know, we have a 15 and 16 year old that um, are non-stop and we've I'm got... I'm surprised they're so quiet, actually. Mm, we've been lucky. Like... <laughs> yeah, and we've got, uh, you know, our little grandson who I had over here today swimming in the pool, which was awesome to see him. And, um, yeah, so... Another was... grandbaby on the way. And another one coming, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Good. Uh, she's due in March, our little, little granddaughter. So, yeah. Um, yeah, look, life is, is phenomenal. And, and, and I guess, you know, it's, it, it'd be so easy to sit back and, you know, at times whinge about, you know, what happened here or what happened there, but... You know, I, I, I remember those times um, as tough times, but I also now think a lot of the good that's come out of it, you know, the way that I treat myself in terms of my mental health, the way that, you know, we've been able to help so many other families with 4 ASD kids, our charity. Um, you know, I just, I love that. You know, I got to, we just put a, you know, a, child, a, a full air conditioning unit into the Corona Community Special School here on the Gold Coast. We did a golf day the other day and raised a truckload of money and uh, they needed air conditioning and we did that. And I just got a picture from the um, contractors and um, Q-Build who were doing it for us. Uh, we've got it all set up and we'll be reading it on Monday for the school's um, annual, um, like their final assembly of the year. And they can't sit in it up here. It's like 35 degrees up here. Moment. They've been fundraising for like eight years. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Do it. So be able to do things like that. Like if if, if we didn't go through at lunch with Max, like I wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to do things like that. So, so true. It's, it's mm -hmm. so easy just to sort of think about yourself, but you know, having Maxie and realizing that there are other people in that situation, we had an opportunity to help them, really helped us. Um, you know, overcome that and then make good out of it. You know, which has been really cool.
that has been good for asdkids.com if you want more information on what we do with our charity. We're going to get to your questions now. You can ask some, the Q&A down the bottom there. Uh, here is the first one. How heavily does being a role model sit for you and Chloe, especially when it comes to having survived professional sports, a media career, and then being so transparent with having a beautiful son on the spectrum. Oh man, I you know I I, I have this I, I hear this thing said all the time about athletes, right? So they're not athletes; they're, they're not role models. They're athletes. Don't expect them to be role models. Well, I, I don't see it like that. Like. Uh, I see ourselves as role models. We we have, we live a life in the public eye, and people watch us all the time. And I have kids, so um, it does weigh quite heavily on me. I want to do the right thing. I want to be seen to be doing the right thing. Um, well, I don't want to be seen to be doing the right thing. I want to do the right thing. Um, and if I do that, then our life's going to be better anyway. So um, yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, that's certainly something. Good question. Me. So yes. These questions are for you to answer, not me. Oh, oh, <laughs> Next yeah. question. Oh, it's oh, Roscoe yeah. Pico. Thanks for the book. I couldn't put it down. Loved every minute of it. Just wondering who was the best runner from the <laughs> Rat Pack. Oh, oh please. The, the Rat Pack is... Um, it was me every day yeah, of the week, yeah, Ross. Yeah. Well, well, Ross, <laughs> if you read the book, Ross, Ross and I started the Rat Pack and Chloe started the Rat Pack. Which is, <laughs> we, we were just like... You know, we were like, many, many years ago when we started. It's a running group, but it's a tri training yeah, group. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's still going today. And it's, you know, they great, raised great membership and they raised money for four ACQs. Jason Highland does a fabulous job. We started the um, Rat Pack just because, you know, it was us swinging the axe for so many years. We thought we need help. Like we need... <laughs> and, we, and, and Ross said, let's start a running group and let's do the marathon. And we got Lovely this group Ross. of people together and it was just amazing. Hey, you know? Like I remember... <laughs> Ross rang me like I'm rocking up to his running shop in Burley Heads at like five in the morning. And he's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes away. I started at 5.30. He's like, there's already 40 people here. And it was just, <laughs> it went bananas. And they are the, they're just the most amazing group of people, you know, all making, you well, know, the effort to get fitter and better. And um, Ordinary people doing extraordinary things, they are, that's they for are. sure. And they raise we funds for AC kids. and. And it was definitely you, Roscoe. We know that. Yeah. I know you were the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, any thoughts on maybe a podcast to discuss with people both high profile and every day off the street? Your story resonates and talking about men's mental health is a big issue right now. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm, I'm unsure about that. I, I, I really am. I'm, I'm sort of running a podcast right now uh, through Rogers Sports Management. You can check it out on Spotify and, and Apple. And, and, and I'll tell you, there's one coming up that, it's I've called just, blood that, I, yeah, that I've just done with Paul Briggs. And you talk about a guy that's gone through mental health issues yeah. and, and so on. That hasn't come out yet. hasn't come out it'll yet. Come it'll come out, out soon. Yeah, it'll come out next month. Um, but just phenomenal, you know. I mean, it's not it's not a topic I'm an expert in. And, and that's what, what worries me about going into, into areas like that, that um, I've, I've experienced stuff with my dad obviously and 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 my brother and, and myself and mind you we're not experts in autism either no but, but, but we, <laughs> don't any, we, don't, we don't provide any we don't provide any services we, yeah we, true we just, we just provide money to fund things good idea uh, though we'll take but it yeah on. but it's certainly something to think about but um no i appreciate the question next question Matt, would you play, ever play Survivor again? No, he wouldn't, Josh, <laughs> because I won't let him. He was gone, can I tell you, for three months, and I couldn't even contact him. And before he left, he decided to throw me in to a full Ironman that I had to train for and be a single mother on my own. The best thing that was about that was that I wasn't here when she was training for Because I would have ripped shreds off it. But, but I will say, <laughs> mate, if they rang me tomorrow, I'd go in, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my it was, gosh. It was so much fun. But, um, yeah, the Survivor. I'll tell you that the, the unsung heroes of the Survivor are the guys who hold the mics, the guys who hold the, the producers, cameras, the guys who build the crew. Camera crew, yeah. Uh, the, like the crew, the, car, the, the, cast, the cast is easy. I mean, what you see these guys doing on the beach and the sets that they build, I just shake my head. I'm just like, wow, these guys are. You didn't get your survivor gear. You should have oh, it's over there. Yeah, yeah. He's got all these buffs and everything. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, though, survivor. <laughs> I would definitely do it again tomorrow if they rang me, if time permitted. Next question. 
What is the best feedback you've had about your book? Well, I, I, I mentioned this oh, before. Emma, thank you, Emma. Um, I've had a couple of people just say it's the best book they've ever read and you know, other people say that they just couldn't put it down. Um, and that, to me, um, makes me just feel like, wow, you know, I've, I've, I've touched someone, you know, with my story. And, you know, I'd like to think that my story can inspire people to, you know, get up and keep going. Um, because, you know, we all, we all have challenges. Um, and at the end of the day, like, well, what, what, what Max being diagnosed with autism did for me was it, it, helped, it, it helped me see the world in a different way uh, and it also helped me through my retirement because we, we ended up starting four ASD kids and it gave me a purpose um, after footy. So many footballers, they really struggle in retirement. But, um, you know, I was, uh, I feel like I just had this, you know, burn inside me to go after something else and, um, that's what kept me going. So, um, yeah, I was grateful. For, well, you know, in the end, if someone said to me, and I know this isn't for everyone, but, you know, if you ask me, we'll take you back 16 years and we can, we can, Max, you can be neurotypical and you'll come out fine. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change it. Nope. Wouldn't change it. Absolutely you know? not. So, um, yeah, I, you know, that's sort of where I'm at with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next question. Are there any more questions? Yep. Absolutely love how much you have shared regarding ASD and your life around it. I know this isn't about you exactly, but is Max still super into gardening and growing fruit and veggies? Yes, he's yeah. got a massive staghorn out in the garden at the moment that he feeds little yeah. bits of yeah. bark and stuff. Hey, really. he, his staghorns are quite expensive when they get it's big. Huge. He got this thing like it was like this little one. It's now like this monster. And his rosemary has taken over. Yeah, his rosemary's become like the wild bush out in the He's got a lemon tree, a lime tree, yeah. and avocado trees that he's cultivated from seed. Yeah, well, we might have to do an update on him. that. He's six foot four and yeah, the yeah. trees are taller than him. So, yeah. yes, he needs to do an update on his garden. If you want to follow him, at Living With Max, it's worth the follow, that's for sure. Yeah, Next yeah. question. Oh, no more chilies, David. No, oh, yeah, no, no, more, no more Carolina yeah. Reapers. What's next for Matt oh, Rogers? Oh, what's next for Matt Rogers? Thanks, um, Leanne. Oh, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly consumed right now with, with our sports management business. It's the off season, so we just sort of, making sure kids are, you know, settling into their new roles at new clubs and so on and so forth. And um, that's um, not without its challenges, but we want to make sure the young fellas that we look after, look after are looked after. And um, so, yeah, that's sort of probably where I'm at at the moment. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what opportunities pop up from time to time. I, um, I, just, I just shot an ad for Alliance last week, so you'll see that in December. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's all done. So, yeah, really just... Um, not just taking a bit of time out. The, the book tour it, it was it was tough. I got and it's not it's not that I didn't enjoy getting out there and seeing everyone, um, but everybody well a lot, a lot of people have their own story to give back to me, and it can it just sort of it, it, it can be tough at times emotionally to sort of be up all the time and and then sort of you know receiving their stories and I and I certainly want to validate those stories you know so I don't want to you know, just ignore them or, you know, sort of blow them off because it's, it's, this is someone's life. And, um, you know, I, we had to cancel a few dates towards the end there because I was just feeling like I needed to for my own well-being. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's just a little bit of downtime now leading into Christmas. And um, There start. might be an announcement, something that you're doing <laughs> next year. Oh, yeah, there could be. But we won't, we won't say anything You yet. can't say no, anything yet? No, no. It could be exciting. Not for a while yet. <laughs> I think that's all we have time for. Um, Booktopia, do you agree? <laughs> We've already said more questions. questions. We've got a couple more questions. We can do a couple more questions if there are some. Maybe we can do one more question. Maybe not. No. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> now, what was what the highlight, highlight of your football, football career? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. You know, I think... Wasn't uh, Josh Lucy tackling oh, you? <laughs> Don't do <Google> that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, would, it would be run, it any palms. Are there any palms watching? Yeah, I'm sure. There are. <laughs> but um, it would probably be running on to, to Cronulla for the, uh, to Shark Park for the first time. Um, being uh, you know, running onto the field that my dad played on, and you know, having 
you know, the play, you know, a player come up to me and say, I played with your dad, you know, I'm playing with you and, you know, I couldn't be proud of have you out here. You deserve to be here. Let's go to work, you know, that sort of stuff. You know, playing in, you know, the World Cup final in rugby league and the World Cup final in rugby union and playing state of origin and playing both low cups, um, they, they are amazing. But just, you know, make, just making it onto that field in the first grade team for Cronulla, you know, running onto that field and, you know, following in my dad's footsteps and, and, and I feel like, you know, I, I did what I was set out, I set out to do as a, you know, as a four-year-old kid, you know, as to be another little Steve Rogers, oh. and uh, I got it done. So that was probably the highlight. That's awesome. Mm. Hey, Jodie Lee, thank you so hey, much Jody. for your love and lots respect. of love, respect, happiness, and yeah. health. Yeah. Families, everything. Thanks, yeah. Jay. Mm. And uh, Mel, you won't see me on heroes, the villains. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, oh, well, Shani, they... Shani's in it though. Well, I don't know if he can mention it. Yeah. No, they. Oh, they posted. Oh, I have it. Oh, right, cool. Social media. All right, cool. Yeah, but no, I'm not in the heroes or the villains. I probably wasn't hero enough, and I probably wasn't <laughs> villain enough. So um, maybe in another uh, spin-off season. But uh, yeah, but thanks for all the questions, everyone. Yeah, we've had so much fun. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it's been so great chatting about Matt's book, A Father's Son. Make sure that you tag your friends and family in the comments if you think you'd like to learn more or they'd like to learn more. Uh, and then you can, I guess, follow us on Instagram at Matt, Matt Rogers 6. Yeah, Matt underscore Rogers 6. Matt with one T. At Chloe Maxwell 31. And, follow uh, Maxie at Living with Max at 4 ASD Kids Charity. Yeah, well, we've got lots of stuff going on. You can sort of certainly track us down. But, um, and... and just tell you one, just for all those people that do send me messages, I, 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 he rarely, never looks at them. I rarely check them. So, <laughs> and um, he follows one person. No, I actually follow a few people now. Uh, we oh, manage them. And people I, I that, um, <laughs> Ten people. But the people that I manage, I don't, and I don't look at my messages on, on social media. Um, just because I, I just, I need to keep my, um, head clear. Um, and hey, I just don't want to get caught up in stuff so um but i but i will say this i appreciate you all um thank you so much uh, for all your support and um please go to booktopia and grab the book and uh, it will be a perfect christmas gift for someone you love booktopia.com.au or the link is in their bio thanks for watching everyone see you next time Bye bye bye